If you are seeing this video, then in all likelihood you've seen one of our products, either on Etsy, um, at our retail shops, or even on eBay. The first subject I'm going to discuss today is our line of psoriasis skin and body care. I have suffered with psoriasis for over 20 years. It began as a small patch in the back of my head and remained so for about 8 or so, 8 to 12 years or so. Suddenly, it began spreading into my ears and across the scalp, which is a very common onset of this disease when it begins its evolving process and chronic problem. Eventually, I began suffering with psoriatic arthritis, and that is when there is an arthritis within your joints um, that's associated as well with psoriasis. The treatment for that was chemotherapy, which is you know, not an easy thing to go through. But I did do it for about two years. And in the course of that, I lost most of my hair, um, very large bald patches on my head that comb overs and hairspray products that were colored didn't contain. I also became very, very ill. I captured every illness that came around. And my husband and I had our first grandchild two years ago. So we were in the company of small children. They're in and out of school church daycare, school daycares, etc. And I caught every single one. And the last winter, I was literally sick for four or five months straight. My hair was so thin, you could see my scalp across the room. Um, it's a very embarrassing uh, event for anybody, and particularly women, I think. Um, and so I went about trying to find a wig that would look natural. I bought at least four or five human hair wigs and I finally decided to put it on. I prepared my family members and myself, I thought. I put it on and my husband came home and said, oh honey, that's just, that's not gonna work. I'd rather have you with thin hair than with a wig that looks fake. And so I did go about covering my head. I tried sprays, I tried every home therapy treatment people gave me. I was on the internet. I, one of the last ones I tried was Listerine. That's how desperate I became because I listened to every old wives tale out there. And finally, I went to my physician and she said, Laura, the only thing I can be able to do for you is give you a spray that burns, uh, that does have steroids in it. And you can only use it for 10 days at a time. Well, that may help on a temporary basis, but when you have chronic psoriasis, when the 10 days goes, you're back again to the flare-ups and I had to wait 10 days. I really didn't get any great healing effect or long-term slowing of the process or certainly not abating the process. So for at least the last 15 years, I have been making my own um, cosmetic line uh, for my skin because I am allergic to uh, most ingredients that are in them. Uh, they have a lot of petroleum products. They have filler, they have urea, which, uh, which is urine. Um, you would be shocked at what goes into cosmetics and skincare cream. And generally, you're looking at a 70-80% water-based anyway. So when you get an ounce of that product, you're getting a whole large percentage that is water. So about 15 years ago, I started on my own line of skincare. For those people who have sensitive skin, um, acne, um, I'm almost 60. Um, I haven't done anything to my face, and I worked on... Uh, age, you know, hopefully age defying or delaying treatments. And I have a lot of people who use it and it's, it's done them very well. But then I realized I was missing the gap for my need. And that was how do I fix or treat or stymie uh, the advancement of my psoriasis. And I worked with many different organic natural products. Um, burdock is a wonderful ingredient. Um, I've learned many, many ingredients that work well together that are all natural, organic, no animal material, and no petroleum products. And I began finding that what worked on my, my large lesions that would be on my stomach or my back or my thighs or my legs um, responded to something much different than that which was on my scalp. And if you see my scalp now, and you will see um, 
the following video, which will be on scalp care and treatment. You will have seen my scalp literally across the room. It was shiny. It, it, it was bald. It had a few little hairs here and there. And it did, never grew past, well, maybe this length. If you could see to the side, this length. Um, because it would break off. It was damaged. It was from the scratching and from the dryness and from the effect on the hair root. So I finally came up with a, ski, a scalp, excuse me, a scalp theorem that worked extremely well for me. It, it was a lifesaver. And you'll see before and after pictures um, of my hair growth. I have some pictures of my scalp, but they're pretty nasty and I really don't want to have to put those out there, but if I do, I will. Um, but in any event, you will be able to see the hair growth. My hair, I began my scalp treatment about three months ago with my, let, my final version of this therapy. And what you'll see here, I'm hoping you can see them. Put something white behind it. You can see these new little hairs that are here. This is all new hair because across the back of my head was bald. So if I pulled my hair up in a ponytail, up, then all of this was bald. And if I did a comb over to cover this bald spot, then my, my um, temples were all bald. So it was a huge, huge struggle and I began finding a serum. I found for me, and I think a lot of you will find, that you have certain times of the day where your condition flares. And I spent a considerable amount of time trying to figure out what was causing my flare up. And for me, my flares primarily happened at night. Excuse my cat, I'm doing this at home today. Uh, and when I would go to bed or go to read or perhaps watch a movie in bed, it would start. And it mainly started, in, which is my worst part of my head, on the back of my head. It would navigate up to my ears by some point during uh, the early morning hours. And when you're sleepy, you tend to scratch it. And scratching psoriasis, as we all know, makes that condition worse. So if you scratch one of your scaly lesions, it, it produces more reaction and you'll have a larger lesion. So the, to break that pattern is, is really hard to do. And I made a serum that I put on my head at night. I literally put a couple of drops in my hand. I'll show you how to apply that later on when I profile that particular product. I'd massage it into the roots, pull my hair in little piglets or whatever I can get into. Some people might want to sleep with a shower cap or something over their head when I first started because I really didn't have much hair so um, I slept with a small summer or winter cap it was very lightweight but I slept with that after about a week I noticed that my lesions were reduced I also noticed that before I went to sleep I didn't have that burning itchy sensation and within I would say seven days it was gone. I, I had one little tiny spot, the one that first started many years ago about pea size. That took a little more time to do, but it was gone. I, I couldn't believe it. So the bad side of that is that you have a greasy head at night, an oily head, and in the morning you have somewhat of an oily head. So if you're someone who can't wash their hair every day, and I'll get into that in a moment for me as well. If you can't wash your hair every day, um, then I want you to alternate two different products. What I ended up doing, um, because showering my hair is another issue, I'm allergic to all those perfumes and fillers and stuff they put in shampoos. And there's really no way around it. I haven't designed a shampoo yet that won't still give my scalp a bit of a, a reaction. And of course, the, the um, moisturizers or conditioners you get, one of the big selling points is they smell good. And so I would buy these wonderful argon oil and shea butter or uh, moisturizers well the perfume would literally flare up and by the time I dried my hair my scalp was on fire so I've come up with a hair moisturizer that has none of that in there and that works just as effectively so I designed a second conditioner 
um, rather based on the principle of the prescription, prescription little bottle my, my uh, doctor prescribed for me that I sprung on. This helped me w so well too during the day because sometimes during the day you're in a situation either when you're stressed or you're overheated or you eat something and you start feeling the tingle of the lesions coming on. And the spray I developed is also all organic, no petroleum, no animal products. And what I do with that is I spray the individual zones that are itching. I spray them before I touch them. And it has very little oil in it, um, so you're not going to have a big greasy head. But I spray it. And what I do when I give you the bottle, uh, the large bottle of products, is I'm going to give you a small um, purse size or pocket size, male or female, or female likes to wear things in her pockets instead, but a small bottle that you can refill with the product. You simply just pour it in the bottle, screw the cap on, and you can carry it with you and just refill it as you need it. So if I'm at a movie theater and my hair is uh, feeling the itch, um, I don't scratch it anymore. I take my little spray out, very discreetly spray it, and I am great for quite a long time. So with me, I do my hair serum one night. The next day, that following evening, I will spray spots that are aggravating, that are itchy, um, or I feel they're hot, or whatever it might be, so that I can have that relief and I don't scratch my head. And amazing enough, when you can get past that itch and you don't scratch those um, lesions, they don't aggravate and become larger. The two products that I will give to you not only soothe the skin, we want a healing process so that those lesions um, recede, but it's also moisturizing so those scales just don't keep building. Uh, one of the ingredients is natural and it helps dissolve some of the scales. So you're not always going to get an immediate effect in that the scales are all gone. That will take you a couple of weeks and I'm going to show you a video of my uh, hairline uh, and I think it's a six week period and then I'm going to show it to you in an eight week period in the following videos. That being said, um, my hair is long. It has grown long for the first time uh, in probably five years. Um, it's still thin because as I showed you, I have this new little growth um, that's coming in from the baldness and I am actually going to not cut it and show you because you will see the striations as to where the hair began growing and the depth and the thickness of the hair that's coming in now as opposed to this little microscopic strands I had before. So uh, I generally wear my hair up the bend so people can't see that. But um, So those two things have worked wonderfully for me. The same product that I am recommending for your scalp I also used in my ears and we all know how awful that can be. Um, I if I'm using the serum, once I'm done with my scalp, then I also make sure that I have an adequate amount in my ear area, um, which is so common uh, for us psoriasis sufferers. Then when I uh, do the spray, I will also spray my scalp and I massage it in all the way around the scalp. I, I spray the bigger areas, the ones that are mostly affected, um, but I also massage it all the way around, and then I will go along my hairline and into my ears. Um, one of the face creams you'll see, for the first time in my life, it started coming down my face this year. I, you, We all know people with psoriasis can get it you know, on their face. Um, I think a lot of that is that I've used all natural organic skincare for years that I make myself and so I was probably helping that skin stay supple uh, and not irritated. So that challenge was startling that I knew then it was going to be one of the only zones that had not affected which was my face. Uh, I then uh, developed a cream using some of the same products that I'm using for the scalp. It's the same principle and it worked and it worked within seven days and you will see I used the same product on my scalp one I had one here and one here and of course they're gone um, it went down the back and they're gone it went below the ear whoops ah. <laughs> 
backwards here in the ear and and that is all gone I also used it on a large lesion on my leg I had a very large lesion towards my, um, my upper thigh near my uh, panty line and I tried prescription cortisone I tried everything to get that to relieve and it didn't so I thought well if this works on my forehead it certainly must work on my thigh and I will show you the before and after pictures it did within 10 days it worked I I couldn't believe it now I've had a couple smaller spots that haven't responded as much as I would like them to um, they haven't grown they've become smaller but they haven't abated altogether so I decided a fourth product and that is those big lesions that are heavily crusty and that are raised need a little more intensity I think on these products than some of the areas other areas zones so I do have an intensive therapy and it's oh my goodness it's so thick you just literally need pea size for any zone and it has the healing properties that we I have in, and added to the face and the head um, it condensed and it also has a beeswax uh, base that holds the moisture in it protects it from the elements on the outside and lesions can be affected by pollution they can be affected by dust mites anything blowing in the air because they're cracked and so if you're outside or wherever you might be if you're not keeping those lesions uh, well covered and medicated so that they don't have exposure it takes longer for them to heal so I sell those in a a four ounce jar and that four ounce jar is so dense it should last for months it, it, it it's an amazing a pea size literally is what I use on a whole zone for example if I have it on my hip area sometimes I'll get it on the T at the back I will use just a pea size in that area and it lasts forever uh, it, it absorbs and then the the beeswax helps kind of keep in that product so it doesn't rub off so quickly and that uh, it's a barrier. It's a barrier to other things out there that you really don't want on skin that is inflamed or cracked. I also, uh, being nearly 60, um, I don't know about any other woman or man who isn't concerned about the aging process. So I have been uh, making skincare products for quite some time uh, with that in mind. But some of the ingredients could be irritating to psoriasis and eczema or sensitive skin sufferers. So I developed a facial... Um, serum for under the eyes if you need something intensive that will not aggravate psoriasis or eczema or sensitive skin uh, which is a firming agent with you know retin-a DME and all the great stuff that firm our skin and I also have a facial cream a nightly facial cream and it also is extremely dense it takes literally a pea size for your entire face and your neck and your decolletage here it is that intensive it's it, it's very very rich um, and I apply that every day before I go to bed and it feels kind of greasy at first but all of those oils absorb so let it do its thing within four to five minutes or so you will find your skin is very resilient the only time I use it twice a day is if we have particularly cold weather here, we're in the south, we do get very cold weather sometimes, um, where the air heater's on all the time and maybe the fireplace is going and the air's really hot, uh, dry the way you know you touch a cat and he sparks and runs off or you touch one another, you get those shocks. When it's in that really dry air, then I will very often use a, a pea size uh, or less, usually less, on my face before I put on my foundation um, for the day or oh, whether or not you wear makeup but for me I put it under my foundation and then my face stays so much more moist uh, so I put it on every single day whether I'm going to wear makeup whether I'm going out of the house um, whether it's hot dry cold every night at least put it on um, and in the dry season because broken skin that comes from skin being dry it becomes chapped is an in invitation for infection uh, or irritation if you have an irritation going on um, 
exposure to the elements just, just makes that worse. We also have a scrub um, that is a dead sea mud scrub uh, that we don't use salts because salts are, you know, they're very drying and they're very painful if you have uh, issues with your skin, sensitive skin. Uh, and it is done with mid dead sea mud, it's done with shea butter, it's done um, with essential oils such as lavender and rosemary that are known for their healing properties. And that's some anglycerin and a few other little proprietary uh, combinations of all natural, all natural plant butters, oils, and essential oils, and, uh, and sugar based. So that it uh, will help you relieve dry skin, soften the skin, and the hydration is very, very good from the moisturizing properties we put into our scrubs. And I do use that in the winter because my skin does get very, very dry. Um, we also sell, I don't use over-the-counter soaps because they're full of many things that uh, you would be surprised to find out, um, and they're also very drying. Uh, my husband ran out and bought me Dove one day thinking, oh goodness, this, this will help her skin, and it had so much perfume in it that by the next day I was a mess. So I do make my own soap uh, for psoriasis, and uh, a particularly facial bar, would I, which I use every evening to take off my makeup. Uh, it is, uh, it has burdock root, um, which is a healing agent for psoriasis. It has turmeric, which is a an anti natural anti-inflammatory and healing agent. It has organic uh, honey. One of our friends has a honey farm. Uh, it has, um, the only fragrances it has, again, are lavender and rosemary, which are known for their healing properties. And this soap is, is wonderful. It takes off all of my makeup. It strips it very well, but the shea butter that's in it and uh, honey, my face feels really good after I use it. It doesn't feel dried out. So I usually make it in a facial bar, and, and you will get two bars to each packet. I also make a Dead Sea Mud uh, soap because it has a lot of minerals in it. And in that bar soap, which is usually one I use in the bath, um, I also add uh, shea butter and glycerin and rosemary and lavender uh, to it and a bit of burdock root. And that is to use on the other parts of your body. Uh, you could use it on your face. I use Dead Sea Mud on my face. Um, on a weekly basis. I have a dead sea mask, mask which we'll discuss uh, later on, um, but that will help keep some of the irritation that comes from over-the-counter soap products that have unnatural ingredients in it. And what I mean unnatural, they're, they're just not um, products I would put on my face. They're not natural products. They're, you know, artificial fragrances, fillers, um, some of them I haven't even figured out what, what that product really is, and if I don't know what it is, I really don't wear it on my body because the skin is your biggest organ and it does absorb what you put on it. And lastly, we do have a mask right now that is uh, actually two masks, uh, a head mask, and this is something that I use once a week. And on Saturday or Sunday, when I have an hour or two to look a little skanky, I uh, take this mask and it comes in a four ounce container, screwed container, and it has dead sea mud, it has uh, four different uh, moisturizing ingredients, some healing ingredients in it, some soothing oatmeal in it, and I literally rub it into, oops, slip away, into my scalp, and then I wrap my head in saran wrap. Not my whole head, of course, or I couldn't breathe, but uh, all along the hairline, and I wrap it and I let it set for about 45 minutes an hour to go down. I get my cup of coffee, I turn on a you know some kind of 30 minute show, um, and when that's over, I'm thinking, oh gosh, about time to go back up. And I go up and I, I literally do shampoo it out, but it what it does is it deep conditions the hair, which is vital in getting back any length, it has to be. Um, conditioned. It also deeply conditions your scalp so that the dry lesions become fewer and fewer and fewer.
So that is a wonderful uh, product I use just once a week. So, you know, treating psoriasis, you have to do it on a daily basis. You have to make the commitment to do it. But if you do, you can find amazing results from, from just those small 10-minute, 15-minute uh, events during the week and that small half-hour event uh, at night. I also have a facial mask. Now, my husband's better at using it than I am. He loves it. Um, and it is made with dead sea mud and it's made with plant and oil moisturizers. It's made with organic honey, um, and it is extremely soothing, and I do put that on. You don't want to put around, you don't want to go from here to here to your eyes, because you don't want to have any pull under your eyes, because this area is the most sensitive and most prone to wrinkling. So when you put your mask on, you will literally go right at the the eyebrow line and you will come down to the top of your cheeks and you'll put it down across these areas and across your forehead but you want to limit this entire orbit of your eye and that's just because that area of the eye you're really not going to firm it very much. It's thin skin and you just want to avoid tagging on it. So we leave that on for about oh, 10 to 15 minutes and rinse it well off. And I even use my burdock soap facial bar just to make sure there's none of the gray mineral left on me. But that is a very good healing and, and firming agent um, because the minerals and dead seed mud are very, very rich and they're very, very good for your skin. And I buy my dead seed mud directly from Israel. So um, it's organic as it can possibly be. And so I hate to say that but sometimes I will have my head mask on and my face mask on and they're they're two different things don't don't use one for the other um, and sometimes our sons will come over for a visit and they have the misfortune of me answering the door um, and I'm gray from here to here um, but it works very 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 well so I will be listing each product I will be demonstrating how to use it um, I would love your feedback uh, and on these products and if you think there's something that should be added to the line um, and you want to make a recommendation I would love to have that feedback too I will see what I can do to work with that and create something that you have in your mind that you think may be helpful to you or if you have a unique condition um, I have it off my methotrexate um, for four months which has allowed a lot of the hair to, to grow too uh, and I'm gonna have to go back on it here pretty soon so just for my joints uh, so I'm hopeful now that I have my skin 95% healed that now when I go on methotrexate I can take a lower dose and maybe help keep my joint damage uh, reduced um, so I am Laura Mars. I'm with Mars uh, Family Mercantile uh, on Etsy. You'll find me under Tulsa Art. Uh, I know it's strange, but uh, they won't let me change my name on that, and I am an artist as well. Uh, and I would love to hear from you on how your my products work for you. Um, and if you have a feedback that you want do you think something could be improved? Um, I'd love that feedback as well. My, I don't have an ego that's not in check. But I know it worked for me. And I have been through 20 years of trying to live with this disease. Um, I don't get the remissions that I had when I was in my 30s and 40s and now in my 50s. I don't get remissions unless I am very proactive. And I, that's a big key. Amazingly, last night, um, as a side note to uh, my fellow sufferers, I wondered why at night my condition would get worse. Any lesion I had would get worse and when I laid down for bed. And sometimes this week I went to lay down and I thought I was fine and all of a sudden my head began burning and it, I looked in the mirror and all my head was raised and red. And I realized that I was sleeping on a pillow that um, was prescribed for me that has little bumps in the arch in it because I was an accident and had a neck surgery and I had to be very careful how I lay my neck. 
And I said to my husband, you know, I don't get this when I, my head doesn't burn this bad when I'm in the guest room. Sometimes we'll sleep in the guest room. Just, I don't know why, but, uh, and I don't get up there. I wonder why I get it so much in our room. So we wondered if it was the temperature and suddenly realized that, that wonderful pillow that has helped me so much with my neck is made with latex and I have a latex allergy. And so last night we changed pillows and I didn't use it. We came up with some other role we came up with to put behind my neck and I did not have the burning at night, nor did the psoriasis that's underlying flare. Um, that tells me two things. The, the product works well, but you also have to be cognizant of the flares, the things that trigger your condition. And I know that when I paint a portrait and I use acrylics that I very often will end up with psoriasis across my face and my chin, and then you know how it goes, it navigates. But that's because I have touched my hand to my face when the latex has been on my hands. So I now use non-latex gloves uh, to make sure it doesn't come on my hands. And I'm trying so hard not to brush myself. So before I go in and I begin painting an acrylic painting, I pull my hair back so that I don't have to deal with hair or something touching my face where I'm brushing. And so there are many triggers. Um, that one has uh, in the course of the day that can make their condition worse and it's important to find out what those triggers are and obviously trials of elimination of one item at a time or another but for me I did find I had some significant triggers um, that caused my condition to accelerate um, and so that was a, a wonderful trial we're going to try it again this week i'll take one night where i sleep on it and see what happens and if it has dramatically uh, improved after i remove it then i will know again that's one of my triggers um, i don't always have that because i tend to get this disease anywhere but but i know that uh, my allergy to latex um, is an issue and so um, you might consider uh, looking around in your environment and seeing something that that you put your head on I, my head's been the worst so I didn't have my stomach and my hips and my back and my legs until this year um, and so everything I've had below the head um, I've been able to eradicate almost completely uh, the scalp for the first time uh, in the last couple weeks is completely except for when I laid on my latex pillow. Uh, and so just keep in mind uh, those things that, that you do use on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you have a flare-up, you might just think about, well, gee, what did I eat? Um, what did I put on? Um, I had to change my detergents um, because I love smelly good detergents. Unfortunately, um, they're artificial fragrances. And I would wake up uh, with pajama or my pajamas were with a big psoriatic rash around where the, the waistband was and under the arms and the collar area. So I knew then that it was um, due to the uh, detergent. So that's something also you, you know, you can take minor steps to uh, eliminate uh, sulfates and things that can cause and artificial fragrances that can cause um, a flare up in your condition. So I'm going to say goodbye today and I will be back on my next video. Uh, I will be demonstrating how to use uh, my scalp, uh, how I use the initial of his hair serum. Uh, I won't look the best because I'll have a greasy scalp for your benefit, um, but I will show you how I use it um, and how little I use and I will show you, you know, from the bottle to the amount of product and how I place it on. And uh, to me, that's our best starting um, uh, product because it's the one that changed my life. I mean, I have, my hair isn't thick anymore, but I have hair and uh, I feel much more feminine having done so, much more self-confident having I hit my hair back. And um, I would love so very much to help 
all of you have the same result. Uh, if that is in fact what is causing your hair loss. And there can be a number of things at once. So for some people it may not work. It may be a hormonal issue or a thyroid issue. But I did find for me that where the hair loss began and where it continued was where my psoriasis was triggered. So uh, I wish you a good day and I will be speaking to you soon.